Hi guys, Daniel here. Welcome to my Atlas walkthrough series. In this series, we will cover and learn most things about Atlas. In this episode, we will start a new character, have a look at the basics to the game, and learn how to get started in Atlas. In this episode, we will get a brief look on the game main menu. We will get a quick look at the character creation. We will look at the character inventory and the character stats. We will learn how to gather basic resources and craft our first tools. We will level up and have a look on the trait points and the skill tree. We will hunt and gather some meat and hide. We will craft a hatchet and a pickaxe and look at their features for gathering resources. We will learn how to get fresh water and stay hydrated. We will learn how to cook food using the campfire. And finally, we will get a look on the nutrition and vitamin mechanics. As a new player, it can be a good idea to first give the in-game tutorials a look. But the first thing I had to do as I launched the game was to alter the audio setting to even hear the narrator in the tutorials. To adjust the audio, I enter the options. To my top left, I adjust music volume and then press apply. And when I'm happy, I press the save button. With that, I could enjoy the tutorials. Welcome to Atlas, a massive pirate world full of action and adventure. You'll find a guide to Atlas's movement controls on the right. Swimming works like movement on land. Atlas has some different play modes where playing PvE or PvP online with or against others is the core. As we get a look in the Join Online Atlas menu, we get to the Atlas List menu screen. At this point, Atlas offers two official servers, one PvE, Player vs. Environment, and one PvP, Player vs. Player. These two servers is played on the map called Ocean. The icon to the left indicates that those servers run with Battle Eye Anti-Sheet. If we open the menu next to the Session Filter, we have the option to browse through unofficial servers and non-dedicated sessions. Unofficial servers is hosted by a private person or a group of people. Those servers can be either PvE or PvP. They run different maps and some don't even have the anti-sheet activated. My humble advice will be to join servers where you know other players already. I got some bad experience with admin abuse from the past playing similar games. Anyways, as we decide to join a server, we are presented with a grid system representing where in the world we want to spawn. If you start fresh on a PvP server, I recommend you to spawn, alternately die and respawn on a free port. The reason is that on free ports, players can't deal damage to each other. As for my walkthrough to the game, we will play single player slash host. The only setting I will change from the default is show map player location. In my playthrough, I'm not using any mods, so information will be vanilla accurate. I'm also playing on the bigger map named Ocean. With on that, I click play single player. Before we can start the game, we need to create our Pathfinder, our avatar, our pirate, our salty seaman, our awesome representation of a tone. For practical reasons and with the game mechanics in mind, I recommend you to create a character that's not too short or too tall, so we don't get stuck but still can reach what needs to be reached in the game. If you're going to play PvP, I recommend you to make a Pathfinder leaning to the smaller size and with a somewhat darker skin tune. Here I made a bit of a cartoony character. A short pathfinder with a bigger head and bigger hands. I will cover how you make custom tattoos in another video. On our right we can give our character a fitting name and a family name. I will be Mr. Apod Poddington. 
if you spend a lot of time making your character, I recommend you to save it as a preset. With this, and with the spawn region selected, we are ready to create our Pathfinder. All right, welcome to Atlas. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is to have a look at the character inventory screen and the stats. I press I to open this menu on the PC. On our left, we have the inventory. For the moment, it's completely empty. The icon in the top left corner indicates we have no power stones yet. Power stones are a part of the overarching quests of the game. There are a total of nine power stones, and when we get all of those, we can summon the end boss. As for now, when we start the game, we only have one craft table, crude tool. This can be crafted with a few fibers and a stone. To the right, we see an overview of our character. As for now, he doesn't seem to have much to offer for the world. In the middle, we have our character stats. Company of Pathfinder number indicates we have not created a company, clan or guild yet. If we look closely on our XP bar, we can see that we gain XP over time. Most things we do in Atlas generate some XP. Just to mention it, some of the best ways to earn XP will be to complete treasure maps, hunt alpha animals, or discover new parts of the map. If you stay on the free ports, you can't level above level 8. We're also locked to level 77 until we explore the world and unlock discovery points. As for now, we don't wear any gear at all. We are nude noobs. We can see what uh, day we are on and what the time is. We can see the current temperature, how many tames we got and how many ships we have. We can also see our hypo and hyperthermal isolation. In Atlas, we also age. When we reach 90, a quest for rejuvenates become available. Completing that sets the age back to 20 and we are rewarded with a permanent statistics boost. Now for our main stats. The heart icon indicates our health pool. Investing attribute points in health increase the health pool with 3 per point. The Pathfinder has a stamina pool. Stamina is uh, actively consumed by actions like harvest resources, using feats and running. When the stamina pool is empty, we get exhausted. We move slower and increase torpidity. When the torpor is too high, we will pass out. Food is a big thing in Atlas. The food pool slowly depletes with time. Regeneration of stamina also depletes the food pool. And when the food pool is empty, we starve. To fill up our food pool, we have to consume foods. Makes sense, right? There's also a vitamin nutrition mechanic to the game. So we need to learn more about foods and what to eat and when. We also get thirsty and dehydrated in Atlas. The water pool also slowly depletes with time. If our Pathfinder gets too warm, the water pool will deplete faster. If we completely deplete the water pool, we will get dehydrated and die. Then we have oxygen. Since this is a pirate game, we will spend a lot of time at sea and, of course, in the water. Being able to hold our breath can be very beneficial. I feel putting points in oxygen is more beneficial if you play PvP. Then we have fortitude. Fortitude increases insulation against heat and cold, raises torpor resistance, it also reduces the decay of hunger, vitamins and thirst. Then we have weight. The weight simply indicates how much you can carry. If we carry too much, we become encumbered, which means we're slow. I tend to spend points on weight in the beginning of my game, and the next time I feel I'm encumbered, but I shouldn't be. Finally, we got intelligence. The smarter we are, the faster we can craft stuff. There is an intelligent buff that will be added to items we craft 
using blueprints. To me, spending points on intelligence will be something we do later in the game. Alright, now it's time to start gathering some resources and craft a simple tool. For the crew tool, we need a few fibers and a stone. To craft the crew tool, we first enter the character menu on PC. You hover the item you want to craft with the mouse and press E, or you right click and choose craft. As we equip the tool to our hotbar, there is a short timer before we can actually use the tool. The crew tool just provides a low quantity of materials, but it's slightly better to use than punching trees and rocks. When the tool breaks, we can repair it by pressing the corresponding hotbar key. This works if you carry enough resources and if the tools is possible to craft without the craft station. As we soon level up, we will get access to some better tools that have more endurance and a bit higher gathering rate. Now, after some time gathering, we got our XP icon flashing. This indicates we gained a level, so from here, we open the character menu again by pressing I on the PC. Here we can see in the XP bar that we got one point to spend. We can also see that all our stats icons are flashing. In the early game, I'm gonna go level up the weight stats. As I spend my point, I get to the skill tab. For now, the only tree unlocked is survivalism. At our lower left, we can see we got 8 skill points available. I will spend 1 point unlocking the basics. This will provide me the campfire, a note, the spear, a water skin, a bow and some stone arrows. I will also spend 6 points to unlock cloth clothing. Alright. Let's craft some of our new stuff. Most things needs hide, which means we're gonna craft some spears and hunt our first animal. So I right click on the spear. We have resources for four spears. Drag it to the hot bar. Takes a few seconds to equip. Let's go and play with Piglet here. Hold left mouse button on PC to throw. Right click to make a little dash. There are some more advanced ways to engage in combat. But uh, we will talk more about fighting in another video. We still got the crude tool. So we don't get very much stuff from this harvest. Alright, so now we got enough hide. So let's start craft the clothes. The clothes got both hypo and hyperthermic insulation. So wearing them will help against hot and cold weather. On PC, as we start to drag the cloth piece, the slot where we can equip it start to flash. All right, so the last piece. And look at that. We look as a professional nobody. Splendid. Hunting another pig will give us some more hide and should bring us to level three. Yeah, there we go. We have a flashing XP icon to our right. Let's just harvest this guy. I will keep leveling up my weight and for the skill tree our only option is to unlock primitive construction. This will grant us the hatchet, the stone pick and the torch. We get the basic thatch construction parts, the smithy and a simple bed. When we build and place a bed it will work as a respawn point. 
Let's uh, go and craft the hatchet and the pickaxe. To make the hatchet, we need uh, fibers, flint, stone and wood. To make the pickaxe, we need fibers, stone and wood. Let's equip the new tools. I'm gonna drag them to the hotbar. All right, now we're ready for gathering some more resources. Whacking the tree with the hatchet gathers more wood than thatch. And whacking the tree with the pickaxe or stone axe gathers more thatch than wood. If we go and whacking a rock with a pickaxe, we gather more stone than flint. And you guessed it right. If we're whacking the rock with a hatchet, we gather more flint than stone. If we go harvesting an animal with a hatchet, it provides us with more hide than meat. And then, of course, if we need more meat, we want to harvest an animal using the pickaxe instead. Okay, so let's have a look on how to get hydrated. In Atlas, you must drink fresh water. Seawater will not work. Fresh water lakes and streams can be found on some islands, most notably in the Freeport regions, like this one. To drink, you just stand next to the fresh water and press E on PC. We can also dig for water in grassy areas. As we prone down, we get some information at the bottom left telling us if we can dig or not. To dig, we press the left mouse button on a PC and a minigame starts, where we're gonna stop the marker on top of the thicker part of the bar. To stop the bar, we simply press left mouse button again, and we will do this three times. For each successful stop, we get 20 units of water. The uh, water spout will deplete with time, and if we were using a shovel, we would get more water from the spout. Now, let's craft some water skins so we can carry water with us. I'm gonna search for it, and there it is. And I got enough hide, so I'm gonna make two. If we dug for water and got the spout, we can hold E or press F on PC to exit the spout inventory. Here we can drag and drop our water skin to the slot. If the water spout is depleted with a skin in the slot, we get a bag on the ground that we can pick up. The white bar to our skin indicates how much water it holds. To fill the skin from a fresh water lake, you go into the water, you place the skins in your hotbar, then just press the corresponding button. So with my setup, I press 9 and 0 to fill up the water skins. Next up, we're gonna have a look on the foods and our nutrition. Let's start with making a campfire so we can cook some meat. Flint, stone, thatch and wood is required to craft the campfire. And when it's done, we place it in our hotbar. To place the campfire on the ground, we now just press the corresponding hotbar key. Then, when we got a valid spot and a blue hologram, we press the left mouse button on PC. We hold E or press F to access the campfire inventory, so we can place some wood as fuel. 
from here we can click light fire and now with the fire running we can drag and drop our meat in the inventory now with time we get cooked meat to eat you can hover the food and press e on pc drag it to the hotbar or right click for that menu We know how to get meat by hunting and harvesting animals. But we also need to hunt for fishes. The reason is the nutrition and vitamin mechanic that forces us to eat a variation of different food types. In early game, we simply swim out in the ocean and whack a fish with our spear. The mechanics can be a bit wonky, I feel. But when you kill a fish, you will automatically hold it so you drag it to shore. Then we just unleash a wrath with our pickaxe on it and harvest that fish meat. To cook it, we do the same thing as we did with the meat. So we just access the campfire inventory, drag our meat into it, and with time, we have cooked fish. Another thing with food is that it spoils. Spoiled or rotten meat can be used later in the game for taming some creatures. Okay, the last thing we will look at in this episode is the vitamin mechanics. Alongside food and water, we must also keep attention on our vitamin depletion levels. On our right hand menu, we got four bars with different colors to them. These represent the four types of vitamins that we need to keep topped up. We need uh, vegetables for vitamin A, the pale green bar, proteins, that's meat, for vitamin B, the purple bar, fruit for vitamin C, the orange bar, and then fish or milk for vitamin D, the blue or teal bar. Later on in the game, we can farm our own crops. But until then, we have to scout and gather for the different nutritions as we explore the world. Alright guys, I would say we covered the most important basics to play the game and keep our Pathfinder alive. So with that, thank you guys for watching this video. Please consider to subscribe to the channel. It would mean a lot and it would be very helpful. You stay safe now. Much love.